we've been just so conditioned to come from a mind place where we're like we have to make things happen you know try 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 harder um get rid of those really, thoughts <laughs> yeah but really like you know surrender is a very beautiful thing letting go surrendering accepting accepting the possibility you know we learned in hypnobirthing class um that putting some sort of a thought or worry that's repetitive at the back of the bus mm. and that's really a beautiful analogy because you are acknowledging the possibility and you're coming to terms with it and saying okay you know this may happen that's okay what are you know it's not likely that this is going to be happen but is it a possibility yes and that just allows you to be much more accepting and uh acknowledging it Instead know, of fearing it. I know that helped you big time um, yeah. when you were about to give birth. Mm -hmm. Like literally the night before your birth, uh, I, I believe for both children, it was it was very helpful. You know? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, experiencing anxiety uh, during your pregnancy or postpartum is, uh, you know, a very common sort of thing that can happen. And, you know, for me, it's uh, extremely personal because... You know, I think I've been battling, not battling, but I've I've experienced anxiety since a very, very young age. You know, I was one of those very achievement oriented kids. It's like, oh, you know, I always have to get really good grades. You know, if I get 98, where's the other two marks? Um, a lot of self-imposed pressure. You know, I was involved in public speaking when I was like four years old. Um and it can create a lot of anxiety but then later on in life it it got like much exponentially increased over time um i had a lot of student debt and that academic pressure that i imposed on myself carried out to high school and university where i was just being very hard on myself um and then obviously worrying about the student debt and you know uh for someone who hasn't experienced anxiety they uh, may not like grasp the 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 kind of um, symptoms and the kind of feelings that you go through, but literally it got so bad for me that um, you know I would wake up in the middle of the night and or not be able to sleep with thoughts racing and you know like what if this happens like you're literally in bed feeling uh, in a state of a fight or flight. And then when it got really, really, really bad was postpartum. So that's when I think it totally reached its threshold. And for a lot of women, this can happen postpartum. Um, where I was just, I, I had heart palpitations, like a beat, my heart was beating so fast. Uh, I was screaming in the shower. Um, you know, going through anxiety and depression at the same time because, you know, it's very common to experience both at the same time. Um, and I just wanted to escape and just, you know, I was in flight mode. Like, I just wanted to run away from everything. And it can be really difficult to grasp because, you know, here I am with, like, you know, a beautiful family, a very supportive husband who gives me so much like unconditional love here's this beautiful baby that you know i brought into the world and he's healthy and beautiful and you know all these amazing things like our life at this point is really amazing much more than i could have ever imagined you know we're experiencing a lot of success in the business um but why am i feeling this way right like why do I want to run away from everything? And this can be very common. Um, and that's why, like, we really want to talk about anxiety from a, you know, I really love the body, mind, spirit perspective. So that you're kind of uh, coming at it from a very holistic perspective. Because a lot of people just cover one area. But all three are much more holistic and in all-encompassing in a way. Mm, wow. Yeah. That, thanks for sharing that. You yeah. Know. I know it's difficult, it's, but it's like I'm almost talking about a past version of myself, so I don't even identify with that anymore. But I can really have a lot of compassion in my heart for anyone who is going through anxiety because I've been there and, you know, I've gone through it, the worst of yeah. it. Yeah. Well, you're right about it being a protection mechanism because you don't even know the reality of living without it. 
you know, um, and living without these thoughts, sometimes you don't even recognize that these are just like, just sort of thoughts that are destructing you, you know, like yeah. you don't even uh, understand it at all. Yeah. Um, and I, I can definitely, you know, uh, relate from my own perspective because, mm-hmm. you know, um, I didn't even know uh, whether, you know, ego based or narcissistic thoughts could be a form of anxiety because you're protecting yourself from from this inner truth right like yeah from shame or Mm -hmm. being criticized in public or judged yeah there's this beautiful quote um you know if and i don't remember who it's from but you know if i got if i gotta be free i gotta be me right and i just think that's beautiful because you know coming to total grips with who you are who you really are yeah who you really are that inner truth uh, you know, if you're willing to just literally be totally at terms with that, yeah. that's what can really set you free because it's just this total acceptance of that truth, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, there's uh, so much emotional turbulence that we've been kind of storing in our body. Um, and now it's part of our energetic field. Um, and, you know, we'll cover more of it in the uh, mind section. But let's start off with body because, you know, I love the body and being in tune with it and, you know, having that body intelligence. Um, But let's talk about it more from a physiological perspective. Like, okay, Ramsha, what happens at a neuroscience level, you know? Um, So basically it relates to the HPA axis. I know we covered it when we were talking about the adrenals or we were talking about... Um, you know, stress and cortisol levels. So basically this HPA axis is, you know, this master control center of our hormones um, and our adrenals and all sorts of hormones in our body. And it really stands for uh, the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis. And basically what happens is that, you know, um, I know we talked about uh, adrenal corticoid hormone, which basically stimulates stimulates the release of um, catecholamines like uh, adrenaline or epinephrine and noradrenaline or norepinephrine and cortisol and aldosterone. So basically like, uh, you know, this adrenal corticoid hormone basically triggers the release of all these stress uh, hormones, fight or flight hormones, and in turn causes a whole cascade of events to happen, you know, related to your blood sugar, related to weight uh, management, related to all sorts of things. So basically, uh, when you're experiencing anxiety, there's an overstimulation and overproduction of uh, ACTH. And that basically uh, puts you in this fight or flight uh, state, which uh, triggers anxiety. And basically, um, you know, at a neuroscientific brain chemistry sort of level, so basically our limbic system is in charge of, um, you know, processing emotions um, and the prefrontal cortex then uses those emotions as a guidance system to make decisions for our like decision making control, right? So basically just as the occipital lobe is related to vision and the temporal lobe is related to uh, processing sound, we have this limbic system which is in charge of processing emotions. And this uh, includes the hypothalamus, the thalamus the amygdala and the hippocampus and so these are the four regions that are involved in uh you know triggering anxiety or processing of emotions and what's really interesting is that uh depending on the anxiety disorder that you are experiencing there's different activity going on in these regions so for example um with panic disorder uh there is hyper stimulation or hyperactivity in the amygdala and there is uh, what what research shows is that, um, and basically we, uh, before we had no idea what, how the brain was related with anxiety, but now that we have you know all these amazing uh, imaging technologies such as fMRIs and PET scans, we can literally see what's going on in the brain at a functional level. So basically, what they found was people with panic disorder they also have less GABA. 
and GABA is this inhibitory neurotransmitter. Um, and basically what happens is now uh, all these uh, hormones like cortisol are being produced in excess and that's because of low GABA activity. And then when you look at someone with a social anxiety disorder, now this is someone who literally like has a stress response to even images of people's faces. So let alone like actually being in physical contact with real people, it's wow. even the thought or the images of of other faces. Can mm-hmm. you know, I just say, please yeah. mind our uh, new puppy? Uh, yeah. The reason why you hear that thumping sound, you know, let's let's bring let's just introduce him. <laughs> Her. Yeah. <laughs> we have another dog who's a he, but yeah. So this is our beautiful Eurasia Gaia. In fact. You know, petting your dog actually does reduce anxiety because it creates more endorphins and oxytocin. <laughs> um, but yeah, her name is Gaia. Her name She's is a Gaia. beautiful Eurasia puppy. I thought I thought I'd mention it because there's a lot of thumping sounds. It's just that she's just started to sort of find her freedom yeah. and uh, she is definitely hey 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 and she's named no. after a greek goddess gaia yeah. which basically means mother earth <laughs> <laughs> so she's very grounded she is definitely grounded yeah <laughs> but yes please go on about yeah so basically what they found was that people who do experience social anxiety disorder um, have more activity in the amygdala as well and have slightly larger amygdalas and so basically it's almost like they're perceiving social situations or people through a lens of fear which is really really interesting and then that there's generalized anxiety disorder which is you know the most prevalent out of all anxiety disorders And basically, with generalized anxiety disorder, um, people also have uh, more activity in the amygdala. Um, So there's overstimulation of the amygdala, which is like known as the fear control center of the brain. And then uh, what's really interesting is uh, people with PTSD or post-traumatic stress disorder, for them, it's actually a little bit different. So for them, there's more activity in the hippocampus. And basically, uh, their hippocampi are larger than average. And basically, what this tells us is that uh, with PTSD, uh, the emotions are kind of, you know, um, not under control. And then the logical part of the brain has to deal with that. Wow. That's interesting. Yeah.